Hey, remember Pluto? That non-planet planet that some people still believe is a planet. Well, today we're going to discuss Pluto once again with some of the recent somewhat surprising discoveries coming out of several studies. Mostly discoveries coming from its surface and what's going on inside, but also a bit of its history and a little bit more about its partner, Charon. With a lot of this based on many mysteries that suddenly revealed themselves back in 2015. Or in essence, when the New Horizons probe visited Pluto and took some really beautiful shots. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss Pluto and Charon once again, talk about some of the recent discoveries and possibly solve some mysteries. And let's start with the biggest mystery, the one that you see right there. The mysterious formation, sometimes referred to as the heart of Pluto. Although honestly, once you see this, it's kind of hard to unsee this, because this also is the face of Pluto. But anyway, since the original discovery, this unusual formation was basically one of the biggest mysteries. How exactly did it form, and whatever happened here, what exactly formed this unusual shape? And this is strange for so many reasons. First of all, it seems to be the brightest surface feature on the entire dwarf planet, and seems to contain no craters inside of it, while also being relatively rich in nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and methane, mostly in the form of ice. And more importantly, because this was a relatively young looking feature, potentially less than 10 million years old, this basically suggested geological activity. Which by the way is one of the many reasons some scientists still believe that this is a planet. Geological activity is difficult to explain without something being a planetary object, but that's beside the point. You can actually learn about some of these arguments in one of the videos in the description. And the thing is, we've known about some kind of a formation here for nearly six decades, since some of the original observations of Pluto. But it seems to have changed in brightness. It might have actually dimmed a little bit in the last 70 years. And that basically implies that maybe this is active even now. But in order to understand how it's active and why it's active, it's obviously important to understand how it formed. Nothing similar seems to exist anywhere else in the solar system, or at least not to such extent. And so in order to solve the mystery of the Pluto's heart and the larger region where it's located, known as Sputnik Planitia, the researchers whose paper you can find in the description decided to focus on computer simulations and modeling, with main assumption here being that it's a result of an impact. But not just any impact, an impact in the distant parts of the solar system where things usually play out a little bit differently. And though this is obviously not the first time such a proposition has been made, the main difference here is an extremely accurate model that focuses on impacts between icy bodies in the far reaches of the solar system. Here, because things are so far away from the sun, generally things move much slower, with most objects mostly being ice as well solid ice that's relatively strong. And so by using a particle hydrodynamic simulation and by trying to simulate impacts from different angles, and also by changing the size of impactors, at some point the researchers were able to recreate something extremely similar to Sputnik Planitia, with the results suggesting that this was a collision at relatively slow velocities but also under an angle, and possibly happening relatively early on billions of years ago, with a collider over 700 kilometers in diameter basically just kind of landing on the surface without melting or liquefying any parts of Pluto, letting this impactor kind of sink into Pluto without really changing much of the surface except for that one particular location that we now refer to as Sputnik Planitia. And it might have even sank all the way into the core, where it might actually still be even today. And so here the simulations suggest that this object never really disappeared, never really got melted, and is probably still there. But more importantly, this also suggests that Pluto is unlikely to have a subsurface ocean. And so because this ancient impactor potentially displaced a lot of the Pluto's core and even mixed with it, while also displacing a lot of the mantle in the process, it might have also affected any ancient ocean that was here before. But since it hasn't moved much since then, it also implies the ocean might not be there. Or if it is there, it's extremely small and extremely thin. Or actually more realistically, and this is coming from a different study, it might not be a kind of a global ocean, with Pluto instead having unusual pockets of liquid water somewhere under the surface. And this evidence comes from something else discovered somewhat recently. This is based on the observations from the crater you see right here. And turns out that this is not just any kind of a crater, it seems to be a volcanic crater. 
it's now referred to as Kiladze Caldera, a caldera also located in a somewhat similar region. And it seems to be an enormous cryovolcano that potentially erupted many, many times, spewing out huge amounts of cryolava, covering an enormous region in the process. But unlike typical lava, cryovolcanoes usually contain a lot of water, but also a lot of additional compounds, such as ammonia, and even amino acids that we usually associate with life. But ammonia in this case is what usually keeps everything from freezing. Now these formations are obviously not new, they've been detected around many different objects out there, the famous ones being on Ceres and of course the moons of Saturn such as Enceladus, but these eruptions very likely happened in the last few millions of years, so all of this is still pretty active. With the obvious question being, ok so where exactly did all of this come from? What's producing this cryolava? And so combined with the result from this recent study, we can only really make one conclusion. Instead of having a large uniform ocean underneath, Pluto seems to have subsurface pockets of liquid water, basically representing tiny seas, with one of them very likely being somewhere underneath this crater. But what exactly keeps this water from freezing is of course unknown. The other parts of Pluto potentially have frozen a long time ago, and so the existence of a global ocean is extremely unlikely. Nevertheless, this is a pretty exciting discovery, especially because this is one of the biggest cryovolcanoes in the entire solar system, competing for that title with other volcanoes on objects like Ceres and Enceladus. Although this one seems to be just a little bit larger and potentially more powerful. But when it comes to oceans, there was another discovery coming from Pluto's partner, Charon. And specifically an explanation to unusual formations on the surface of Charon that you see right here. Various chasms and various ridges that Pluto does not seem to have, but that we have seen on other objects in the solar system. And on Charon, this even forms an unusual belt. It seems to go around the entire object and basically kind of divides the planet into two parts. And though at first it was believed to be maybe a sign of a collision, a much more likely explanation comes from the recent paper that basically suggests once again that this is a sign of an ocean, but in this case, a frozen ocean. An ocean that used to exist there, possibly even for millions of years, but that over time froze, and as it froze, it expanded, creating a large amount of stress, which resulted in a lot of pressure building up inside, which then forced the water to escape. And that's mostly because water, when it freezes, it expands in volume, and if it happens inside an object like Charon, it's going to push things out of the object, causing a lot of fracturing on the surface. And so that's kind of what we observe here, pretty much all over the surface. With all of these features basically being signs of escaping water that was being pushed by the ice forming inside. And so in other words, this object was also very active volcanically, it had a lot of cryovolcanoes, but most of this happened possibly billions of years ago. And that's because scientists believe that there was just nothing inside Charon to prevent freezing from happening. Even though Pluto and Charon orbit around one another, they don't actually produce a lot of tidal effects because they basically face each other and are essentially tidally locked. There is practically no gravitational friction formed inside these objects, and so there is no heat produced. And this is something that happened very early on, implying that these objects probably froze pretty quickly as well. And though there were probably oceans in both of them initially, as they froze, the pressure from the inside started to form all sorts of features on the surface. And so intriguingly, the vast majority of features on the surface of Charon really seem to be the result of the ocean freezing, causing the cryolava to escape and to then break apart huge parts of the surface. And so both of these objects seem to have a lot of geological formations that potentially are the result of ocean activity. But what's interesting is that neither one of them seems to have active oceans inside, which is somewhat surprising because somewhat recent discoveries from two other objects on the outskirts, the objects like Makemake, you can actually learn about this in the description below, do suggest active oceans inside of those objects. And because those objects are even farther away and technically even colder, currently there is no explanation for why some dwarf planets have nothing inside and some seem to have oceans even today. And so basically there is still a bit of a mystery. Why do some of these smaller objects have something inside, yet some have frozen and remain completely still? But since there is no answer right now, we'll come back and talk more about this once there are additional discoveries. Anyway, on that note, all of the studies and links should be in the description below. Check out some of the previous videos on discoveries from Pluto or from other similar objects in some of the videos right there. 
Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.